Hello students this is professor Ashish T Patil from department of mechanical engineering KIT College of Engineering autonomous Kolhapur we are in the subject of total quality management we have started unit number 2 that is planning for quality and in that last time we have seen the concept of strategic quality planning today we will discuss the concept of benchmarking what is benchmarking as per american productivity and quality center that is apqc benchmarking is defined as the process of identifying understanding and adapting outstanding practices and processes from the organizations anywhere in the world to an organization to improve its performance every organization has its own product and services and for which that organization always strive to achieve the best position in the market to achieve this best class the organization will always have to strive for achieving the best practices how it will achieve the such kind of best practices now for that reason this organization has to identify understand and adapt the outstanding best practices from the organizations which have already proven themselves as leader in the market if we see the david kern's definition what he says he says benchmarking as the continuous process of measuring the products services and practices against the toughest competitor or those companies recognized as industry leaders so here kerns tried to define the benchmarking as continuous process of measuring the products and services and the best practices against the toughest competitors or from those organizations which have already proven themselves they are already there in the market and they are leader in the market when thor has defined the benchmarking what he says it is the systematic comparison of elements of performance of an organization against those of other organizations usually with the aim of mutual improvement now he has tried to give the definition in the same way as we have seen previous two definitions only thing added here is the aim of mutual improvement now what exactly benchmarking with this diagram what you can understand is that initially when you think about benchmarking you will always think about what is our present performance level is how we presently perform the activities how we do the exact activities by our way and when you compare with what others are doing what are other performance levels how did they get there then by comparing this you will try to have the creative adaptation from those different things which other or say leader organizations are pursuing and from that you will try to have a breakthrough performances you will develop your own systems and you will try to achieve that best class position in the market now what are the various reasons to benchmark or you can also say them as the objectives of benchmarking now first objective is benchmarking aims at a goal setting process to facilitate comparison with the best there are numerous players in the market say for example the mobile market in india now mobile market obviously samsung has created its own position now other indian companies like lava or other chinese companies like oppo vivo they will always try to compare their products performance with that of the samsung performance if they consider samsung as the leader and accordingly they will try to have their own goal setting process to facilitate the comparison with the best that is from the leadership aspect 
from the point of gaining that leadership position in the market. It aims at motivating and stimulating company employees towards the goal of continuous quality improvement. Now, when you talk about benchmarking, it always aims at motivating and stimulating company employees. How? Because when you compare with other practices, other organizations best practices rather, then you will come to know what exactly is the difference in the processes which they have adopted and because of which they have gained a better position than our organization. Once your employees come to know such best practices, they will also get motivated of attaining such kind of best practices and they will definitely get stimulated for such kind of processes and which will help you out to portray yourself as the organization which is there with continuous quality improvement. Benchmarking also aims at external orientation of the company. We always try to orient our company or organization from internal point of view. That means, our internal people will assess the performance of our company. But when we consider the concept of benchmark, we will tr try to look our company from external point of view. So, this is nothing but the external orientation of the company and because of which we will come to know about the best of the practices by the other companies. Next objective of benchmarking is it aims at identifying a technological breakthrough. What are the new technologies, upcoming technologies which other companies have adopted and because of which they have gained a momentum and they have developed their own position in the market. Now, benchmark will help you to identify such technological breakthroughs and which will definitely help your organization to have your own best practices. Next reason of benchmarking is that it aims at searching for industry best practices. Now, we are continuously talking about such best practices which are adopted by <coughs> all other organizations, not in terms of from the same area of the, uh, the companies which are in the same areas. You, you, it is no need that you should only consider such best practices. You can consider the best practices from the companies or organizations which are in other areas also. For example, your organization is from uh, engineering industry. You can consider some best practices, generic best practices from say pharmaceutical industries also. So, these are some various reasons or objectives of benchmarking. Now, what are the various types of benchmarking. There are two categories by which we can see the benchmarking. The first category is based on the object to be benchmarked and second category is based on the organizations against whom one is benchmarking. Now, what are the various types based on the object to be benchmarked? The first worry product benchmarking. This product benchmarking tries to refer to comparison of different features and attributes of competing products and services. Here you will compare your products features and attributes with that of your competitors features and products features and attributes and based on that you will find out what changes you can incorporate. Next is performance benchmarking which refers to comparison of performance indicators which are related to a business as a whole or to the group of critical activities or processes. So, what exactly you will do here? You will measure all the different kinds of systems performance variables like you will see your efficiency against the other organizations efficiency in same product areas, effectiveness, then the productivity of your own production as well as with that of competitors, the quality attributes of your products as well as those of your competitors, flexibility aspects, profitability aspects. In all these attributes, you will try to measure your own performance with that of your 
competitor's performance. So, this is performance benchmarking. Next is process benchmarking. Now, as per name, it refers to comparison of processes, which best possible processes or say which technologies which you are using. And in that way, it will try to identify more effective and efficient process also to be implemented. So, once you are just go through the various processes your competitor you are they are using for developing uh, their own products and services based on their results you will also try to incorporate the best of the technologies and best of the processes in your own processes next is strategic benchmarking which refers to examining competitive position in the marketplace what our company is having position in the marketplace compared to that of the leader companies in the same area so in that way it will try to help out your company to find out the business strategy of another successful business and by using their strategy you can think upon how you can build your own position in the market you can use the same strategy also or you can have combination of say different successful businesses strategies and based on that you can develop your own strategy for becoming more competitive in the market. Next is generic benchmarking which refers to comparison of general best practices which are common across industry sector markets and here the comparison is not restricted to any one market or industry even though if you are in the field of say FMCG you can have the best practices from say engineering industry and by have generic best practices and based on those generic best practices you can develop your own. Next is the category that is benchmarking which is based on organizations against whom one is benchmarking and that the first category is internal benchmarking and which refers to comparison of performance between various departments across the same organizations or say plants from same uh, industry their subsidiaries within the same organization so organizations may be having different departments or organizations may be having different plants situated at different locations they might be having some subsidiaries also which are developing some other products so you can compare the best practices within your organizations and based on that you can come out with a unique best practice which you can implement at your place. Next category here is external benchmarking which refers to comparison of performance with external organizations producing same class of products and services. You can here compare with other organizations who are in the manufacturing of same product or providing the same services and by comparing their processes you can have your own and you can set your own standards next is industry benchmarking and which refers to comparison with a group larger than the direct competitor whoever direct competitor you are having the group which is larger than that particular competitor you can compare with their best practices that is called as industry benchmarking next is competitive benchmarking so here it refers to comparison of performance against your direct competitors in order to catch up or surpass competitor performance. For example, in mobile, say Oppo will compete with Vivo and in that way Oppo will see the best practices which have adopted by Vivo and they will try to adopt the best practices and they will try to surpass the competitor performance with that of Vivo. Next is best in class benchmarking which refers to comparison of performance with best practices prevalent in an organization irrespective of products and services. So, here you will not consider only the products or services rather you will more of think about the best prevailing practices in any of the organization. So, that is why it is called as best in class benchmarking. Next benchmarking is relationship benchmarking which refers to comparison of performance with the benchmarking company which already has a relationship like customer supplier. For example, you may you are the customer and you are having your multiple suppliers. 
you can find out the supplier who are having best of the practices and you can compare your own practices with that of your suppliers practices you can compare your own practices with the company with whom you have a say joint venture arrangement so in that way you can have a benchmarking comparison in a way which is called as relationship benchmarking where you can compare with the organizations where you are having relationship like customer supplier relations or say joint venture also now what are the various steps in benchmarking now there are various phases the first phase is planning phase in planning phase you will initially earmark or find out what exactly you are going to benchmark once you identify this then you have to identify the best competitors in the industry with whom you are you want to compare their their best practices then next is determining the data collection method by which you are going to gather the information regarding the best practices adopted by your competitor and accordingly you will start collecting the data now once this planning phase is done next phase is analysis phase where you have to determine the current performance gap where you are lagging and that gap you will have to identify and based on that you will project the future performance levels also because you have to now identify that gap then again you have to try to close that gap and based on that you have to uh, have your own pro future performance levels also you have to identify those levels next is integration phase here you have to communicate the benchmark findings whatever findings you have gathered you have to communicate with your all employees and from that you will try to have the gain acceptance from all your employees and in doing that you have to establish the functional goals also how you are going to proceed further for that reason you have to communicate the data for analysis also then again you have to have the gain acceptance for analysis also next is action phase where you have to develop the action plans how you are going to implement those best practices in your organization then you have to implement the specific actions and accordingly you have to monitor progress also if not you can again recalibrate the benchmarks again you can implement the way by which you are going to implement it and again you have to test the progress or monitor the progress that is the action phase and ultimately during maturity phase you have to attain the leadership position now once you have adopted these best practices by using this best practices you will try to have that leadership position in the market and once you attain the leadership position then you can again re-establish yourself and again you can go for next level of benchmarking so in that way you have to integrate the practices into the actual process so with this we will conclude our second unit that is quality planning and in next session we will see or we will start with new subject let us pause the video and try to answer this question i hope you have answered the question with this we will conclude our unit number 2 thank you